Alright. Apparently we traveled back in time. And now we're making the same decision of where to go again. I didn't feel like the hilltop was the wrong decision though. I don't know why. Hmm. What could I change though? If I go to the school rooftop, will Myra be there? She was at the hill though. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Of the rooftop. It makes sense. She wrote this whole play and cast herself as the leading actress. If she wants to end things cleanly, she'll go back to where it all began. Here goes. I'm here. I look up at the roof and realize that I have no idea how to get there. But there has to be a way. There's always a way. How would she have done it? I sprint around the side of the school to see if there's anything I can climb on. I notice the outdoor shed has been long since been sitting at the back of the building near the back door of the construction lab. Then it makes sense. The structure is almost half the height of the school. It's been here since the beginning, but I never thought or I never once thought about it. I leap onto a stack of leftover wood and grab hold under the shed's roof. Pulling myself with strength I never knew I had, my feet grab hold and I regain my balance. The bottom of the second floor windowsill isn't too far, digging my fingers into the few inches of space between the window and the brick wall. I forcefully pull myself up with the help of my feet. Just a bit more. Considering how large these windows are, I only need to grab a couple of bricks above it to pull myself to the top. Ah. With a gasp of breath and a skip of a heartbeat, I propel myself upward and I grab hold on the, of the roof. My fingers cling to the railing and I roll myself over. Landing on my back, I stare unfocused at the snowy sky above. But it isn't over. There, on the opposite corner of the roof, staring up at the night sky, is the person I was looking for. Oh, there she is. You made it. Of course I did. I knew that you'd find me. Her smile is blank, distant, like two weeks ago when we first met. I'm glad, Mark. Glad about what? The fact that I found you after you ran away from me? About everything. I'm glad to have met you. I'm glad to have gotten to know you. I'm glad to have fallen for you too. And... I'm glad to be able to say goodbye like this. Myra. Her stolid gaze tells me that nothing can make her change her mind. But she still looks at me expectantly. You don't want to leave, do you? No, I don't. But I have to. If you get hurt either way, why not risk it and stay here? I can't do that. It was, this was all wrong from the very beginning. Does that even matter now? Of course it does. You don't want the last two weeks to disappear, do you? They won't disappear. They can't. Memories don't die, but they can be tarnished. I'm sorry. I'm really truly sorry. Wait, don't jump into any conclusions. Those conclusions were determined from the moment we met. I lied to you. I'll forgive you for whatever you did. It's not that simple. Myra takes a step back and I tap a, and I take a step forward. It's just like before. After three years, it's just like before. And if I stay, it'll be all wrong. There'll be no turning back, and I'll never be able to forgive myself if you hate me. Now take a deep breath and stop worrying. The problem is all in your head. No, it isn't. Well, we won't get anywhere if we both back down. Maybe so. But after everything that happened, I don't want to lose what we already have. Myra, I try to reach out to her, but something stops me. If I do it, will I really destroy the memories we already made? No matter what she's hiding, I'll accept it, but... I'll leave it at this then. The answer is right in front of you, Myra. 
Make your choice. It's tough to see what's in front of you when you're afraid of what's behind you. The snow moves in reverse. I'll never forget you, Mark. And I wasn't lying when I said that you were my first love. The words are only a whisper. A whisper that fades as she takes her last step backward and falls off the roof. I walk forward, slowly, with my leaden feet. Huh. Huh. <sighs> I'm not surprised. There's nothing below but a balcony overlooking a garden with a small patch of snow-covered soil lying below. But the snow had been falling for a while this time, and the whole balcony is covered, save for the spot she landed on. A short trail of footprints leads her away. Oh, that's right. I caught a glimpse of something when she jumped. No, 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 no. This isn't over. I miscalculated. I tried my best, but in the end, I guess wrong. And so I can cycle continues, which means as long as I persist, I can try again. Even if it kills me. Oh, same thing happens. But is the right decision just to fall? I don't know. Can I try again? To the hill. Well, this time I go to the hill? Or... Hmm. Skip everything. I... What, do I... If I go to the hill, will the same thing happen? Clicking, clicking, clicking. It's just an angry look on her face. And she runs away again, I think. Or rather, what? What happened? Actually, what was that new? Let me go back. Actually, I think I messed up. Because I think that was new. Can we stop time traveling already and just talk this out? I don't know what's happening though. Can you explain all this? Please? I'm still confused. Please explain it to me, Myra. I don't understand. Okay, you wouldn't be able to forgive myself if I didn't. But why here? Is another one I should be asking you? Stop. Nani. Ran away for a reason. We can't be together. What right do you have to decide that? I told you I was lying from the beginning. Shut up. Urusai. And my stomach is full of fire now. I love you. I step toward her and she steps back. You don't understand. Isn't that easy? Isn't that simple? We're not fit for each other. That'll never change. It didn't work back then and sure as hell won't work now. Never? You're kidding me. Not in the least. What the hell is there to understand? I pushed. It doesn't matter. No! I won't accept it. I pushed and I pushed. Is that all you're gonna do? Shout until I give in and embrace you? If that's the case, then I might as well leave. I love you. No matter what I do, I can't change that. No matter who you really are or what you did, even if I tell myself I don't care or if I try to give up, it doesn't matter if I say I love you or I, I hate you, I can't stop. That's how important you are. It's incredibly, stupefyingly, mind-bogglingly dumb, isn't it? But I can't help it. No one can. Are you serious? I wish I weren't, but I am. I can't give up on you. Do you think you can give up on me? I... You shouldn't have come here. God, why here of all places? I only wanted to visit for a moment. Just to say goodbye, you were supposed to meet me at the school and I guess that's just too bad. If you end up hating me, I'll never be able to live with myself. I'm like you. I'm wounded too. So tell me. Tell me everything. 
But it's wrong. It's all wrong. Well, as long as you're with me, I'll forgive you. So tell me. If I do, you'll... Then tell me this. Why didn't you run away? You could have hidden someplace where I'd never find you. Well, you weren't supposed to find me here. You should have gone back to where we first met, and I've been waiting. I would have said goodbye, and none of this would have happened. And yet you came here. A smile pushes its way through the tears. Yeah, I did. It's too late to run away. Strands of hair flicker across her eyes, and the memory resurfaces. I was there, Mark. I remember everything. You were hurt. You didn't cry, but you were like a kid realizing for the first time that there's no Santa Claus. I remember you, but you... You don't remember me. Myra, it all makes sense. She was never a long-lost love, she was just... I deceived you, Mark. I dressed like her, acted like her, lived like her, dyed my hair, stole her ribbon, and used it all against you. So what? You're you. You're the one I fell for. If only it were that simple. I wasn't kidding. I lied. I lied about everything. That doesn't... Don't you see what this means? The woods, the roof, your window, everything. Asking you about your taste in literature, what a joke. I wouldn't read classic lit if I didn't have a teacher breathing down my neck. And a sports day in my school, that too. At least I had the sense to practice jumping out of my bedroom window 10 or 20 times before doing it for real. Just imagine it. A lonely girl standing in front of the mirror, tying and retying her ribbon until it looked like her crush's crush, her rival, her idol. Standing there for hours, forgetting that there was a homework to be done and dinner to be eaten. Just standing there crying. I knew how hurt you were too. I figured it out as soon as I saw you, but I went ahead with it. I set you up to think you had a chance. Did even think twice. The storybook romance doesn't exist, Mark. Wasn't this all a bit too convenient? Reality would never unfold that way. It never does. Unless one of the parties is putting on a show. Isn't it pathetic? You don't know me. You never even met me. It's everything. Everything about me. This was all just a story to prove that I could make you look at me. To me, you're the boy who changed my life. But to you, I'm no one. The girl you fell for doesn't exist. I'm no savior. I'm a fantastic actress. My hands are numb to the wind. And what about the hill? What? You said you were acting, right? What about the evening we spent on this hill? Were you wearing your mask even then? I... Yeah, and our kiss was a lie too, right? Oh, I'm sure. Totally convinced. You were my first love, Mark. I took this ribbon from your crush because I wanted to be like her. And I lied to you these past two weeks to prove that I finally was. And now that's... That's done. There's nothing more to be said. I smile. I think you're missing the point. I couldn't expect you to know this, but there's one fact that you forgot to calculate. All this time, I wondered if you were a childhood friend. I thought this was, this was all nostalgia. I assume that was why I was falling for you. You reminded me of something. Of someone. But that's not the case at all. We were barely even acquaintances. You know what that means, don't you? That memory's... irrelevant. It was you that I fell for. You know, you might think you're a great actress, but... You're not perfect. 
See this? What are you doing right now? This is called acting. <laughs> Mark, you're not the only one who's done stupid things in the name of love. Confess, don't confess, what does it matter? You're screwed once you fall for someone anyway. So let's make the best of a bad situation, shall we? Will you join me? We can't do this. You're weak. I'll learn to be strong. It takes a lot of guts to be strong, you know. And I'm not strong either. Then you'll learn to be strong too. And what if I can't? Now then we'll be weak together. Does it even matter? You're not taking this seriously enough. This is a big commitment. Things might go wrong and we can hurt each other. What if you wake up one morning and decide to walk out on me? That won't happen. Then what if I decide to walk out on you? That's... Gotcha. She runs her hands through her hair and unties the dangling red stripe. That won't happen. You sure? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I promise. If you make me cry, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> the feeling's mutual. That, as they say, was that. It's funny when you think about it. Funny how simple it all was. It might not seem like a storybook romance, but it's real, as real as the person in front of me, and so I held her tight as our sepia-dyed tears ran dry. Here's the credits. I kind of, kind of don't want to speak over the song, but uh, I think I will because I usually just ramble a bit after. In the, in the credits, anyway. And all I can say is like, yeah, that was it. Interesting story. I guess, well, it was true. It was a, it was a bit of a twist at the end there, as it turns out. And well, we've confessed, got rejected, got confessed, uh, rejected again. But, well, we finally find our love, I guess. I don't know. And I guess, I don't know, there was a lot of references to like memories and stuff. Like I was wondering if there was actually like anything to do with the protagonist's actual brain forgetting stuff, but actually I don't think it, it is, it's just that it's just a little bit vague like that, I don't know. But uh, well yeah. We... Well, as it turns out... Someone was trying to be our first love, I guess, but, you know... You know, first loves, usually, they don't really last long, and... You don't really- it doesn't really matter, does it? Right? In fact, it's because we've forgotten, or at least Mark anyway, forgotten most of our first love anyway... That... What we fell in love with was not the memory, it was the person. You know? And all that cheesy stuff. Anyway, it was great. It's a great little story. I liked it. And I wonder, well, I, I wonder if there's different endings. I'm not sure. I don't think there is, but I don't know. I don't think I'll explore the other choices. Um, I think I've, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the choices I've made. And I've enjoyed the story, so I don't know if, you know, if you're listening to this, if you want to play the game for yourself and see the other choices, I guess. There's some replay value there, but otherwise, I think I'm done? What? Question mark? Finn? Question mark? Nani? 
Is there more? Myra's diary. Oh, there's there's more. There's more to do. Right, is there? Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, Myra's diary. Um. Well, I guess. Well, let's look at the gla gallery. It's like got these. Hmm. Interesting. And well. It seems there's a new option here. I guess we get to learn about Myra herself. Right? I think well I guess it's it's a real name. It's not the the, the, the first crush of our protagonist uh, uh his name, but rather her actual name and her herself. I guess this is her in the main title now. Hmm. Is it Oh, Thursday, January first. Do we learn more about Myra? The first is January, beginning of a new year, a new chapter. There couldn't be a better time to write this entry. I have a confession to make, multiple confessions actually. I was Mark's classmate in junior high, or to be more precise, I was his secret admirer. You know, as it turns out, she was, you know, Mark was actually kind of joking that she was a stalker, but actually turns out she was a bit of a stalker. Uh, well. Oh well. People were a challenge for me. Mathematics, art, and athletics were easy, but people were a challenge. My father, Leonard Kinsey, the man responsible for the cherry tree on the hill, has always been kind to me. He always kept me in the shadow. Fame and fortune are a barrier when they don't belong to you. Pride and confident on the outside, empty on the inside. I was a model daughter, and I was alone. Mark was different back then, back when I fell for him. He was creative, charming, always smiling, if a little awkward. He must have thought he could do anything. He certainly acted like that. He caught my eye. He doodled in his notebooks as the teachers droned on. I always wondered what he might be daydreaming about. Soon, my own daydreams took hold. Every day at lunch and after school, I would unconsciously dream of scenarios that led me to him, accidentally dropping my books, helping him with an excitement, bumping into him while getting a drink at the water fountain. But they were daydreams, and daydreams never, excuse me, <laughs> and daydreams never come true. And so my feelings gnawed at me from the inside instead. It was like hunger, when the body doesn't get what it wants. It lets you know in the worst way possible. The heart works the same way. Eventually, I noticed a change. He started looking at a certain girl from the next class over, and it was a strange look, the same one I saw when I looked in the mirror. Naturally, I did the only thing I could do. I watched. The leaves fell to the ground, and snow hid them. I watched as he talked to the girl at lunch, and bumped into her in the halls. Something started dying inside me, but I couldn't understand it. And at the same time, something was born. I soon came to know a determination that I didn't think I had. Yet I told her to meet him on the roof after school, and from the way he paced back and forth in class, pretending to clean and pack his bags as he, as his eyes anxiously darted to the clock, I knew what he was going to do. So I followed him. The confession wasn't as bad as he thought it was, but through the lens of a heartbreak, a paper cut becomes a knife wound. The girl was attractive, confident, popular. It was no surprise that he fell for her. As it turned out, it was no surprise to her either. She turned him down without a second thought. I still don't know what was going through her mind. Did she want to end the rejection as quickly as possible, like pulling off a band-aid? Was she so used to being adored that she lost her abilities to sympathize for a broken heart? I'm not sure. When she was, when she was, when when she walked by with Mark's incapacitated, incapacitated body, incapacitated body, she paused for a moment, pulled the ribbon out of her hair, and wrote something. Did she always do that? Maybe she had an infinite supply of hair ribbons at home, 
and she distributed one to every boy she rejected, or it was just a whim. After noticing that they weren't alone and seeing my no doubt teary eyes, she simply pulled a marker out of her bag, jotted down a final message, dropped it by Mark's hands, and left. The crucial piece of information that took him three years to remember was that he never picked up that ribbon. I did. Time flew by after that. I moved overseas with my parents as part of a business decision, but I was glad to escape. I wasn't running away. I was angry. Angry and determined. It didn't take long. I bought new clothes, grew my hair out, got contacts, practiced smiling in front of a mirror. And every day, I wore that ribbon in my hair, a memento of two tragic first loves. My classmates were distant from me at first, knowing that I was from a wealthy family, but I began to fit in before long. I made real friends there and overcame my phobia of people. All that remained was overcoming my phobia of love. That was when an opportunity fell into my lap. My dad told me that we would be relocating back home and that I would come with him or stay with my other relatives for a few years. I hesitated for a moment. I was happy, so why return to a place that could only make me sad? But that was precisely why I had to go back. I had something to prove. I came home at the beginning of December, and I was starting to attending school with a new term when the new term began. Dad allowed me to select the high school of my choice, so I did some research. The excitement was building. I found out that Mark was attending a local high school with his sister and two friends, and that it wasn't unreasonable for me to attend as well. In the meantime, I had a month to make contact and see what I missed out on over those three years. If all went well, I found out that Mark had gotten over his heartbreak. He looked at me as a girl for the first time, and I proved to myself that I wasn't as weak as I used to be. But things never go well. I knew he was empty from the moment I first spoke to him, but even if he didn't want to face his feelings, I could show him that love wasn't something to fear. I proved to him, I prove it to him and prove it to myself. The technical stuff was easy. There was a garden beneath a balcony on the screw roof. All I had to do was slide from the balcony to the soil. I hid there for at least 10 minutes, so of course he didn't see any footprints. Oh, so that's how she did it, to make it seem like she disappeared. After that, all I had to do was make use of my surroundings. He already expected me to do the impossible, so disappearing in the forest was as simple as stepping off the path and hiding behind a tree. What? That's what you did? Wow. Incredible at sneaking. In fact, you, you, actually, you, there was a joke before about her being a spy, but as it turns out, she is a bit of a spy. He knew he didn't have to search for me either because I promised to find him. Mark saw through me, apparently, and I was surprised. I tricked him at first, but he knew that I was smiling from my heart when I found him in that park after he talked to Lillian. I was shocked when I found myself enjoying the conversation, shocked and a little afraid. The visit to his room wasn't even part of the plan, I, I just wanted to see him. It was fun to tease him, to see his reactions to my silliness. I wanted to get swept up and taken to the first place he could think of. I started to see the quirky charm buried beneath years of forced apathy. Before long, I was in love. It was terrible. I didn't want to fall for him. I just wanted to prove that I was no longer a slave to my emotions, but I ended up proving the opposite. The more that I think about it, the more cruel it becomes. Am I only happy because I forced myself to change three years ago? My confidence started out as nothing but a lie, is that what it takes? And what about Mark? Even after trying his hardest, he still got hurt. Both three years ago and now. If I hadn't met him, would he still be avoiding love at every turn? It's horrible. No matter how much we talked, all we could come up with that is love is horrible. A horrible thing. All is fair because it doesn't play by the rules. You can fight your hardest or give up before the battle begins and you can still win or lose. There's no structure to life, no overarching theme or black and white belief that determines who succeeds and who fails. There isn't always a lesson. Einstein was wrong, 
Repeating the same action over and over can grant you drastically different results, and finding a new method doesn't guarantee change. Well, maybe in the end, all that matters is that you don't run away. If an idea appears before you, seize it. Make the storybook real. Alright, that was satisfying, but my head is aching. I need to go to bed. We've got a long year ahead of us. I'm still tired from our New Year's celebration last night. Hey, I guess we did go to karaoke. Amazing. And well, you know, there was a lot of references of if what if, if this was a storybook romance or whatever, but it kind of is. It turned out to be that, you know, turned exactly that. Because Myra's first love, you know, turns out it's her current love, I guess. Anyway, uh, well, I guess there's nothing else to do, but let's check out the gallery, I guess. Why not? We. Yay! There's her in the hill, smiling. There's Lillian. I guess we, you know, I guess uh, Mark moved on from his first love to Lillian. But uh, he got rejected again. Too bad. Hey, isn't that how love is? I kind of mentioned this before, but, you know, you can't force it, right? You love who you love, and you can't expect the other person to feel the same. So... That's why love is difficult. And all that. You just gotta find someone who's compatible with you. And there's no guarantee that it'll all work out in the end. But I guess it did. Hm, <laughs> don't cry. I guess it did. For Mark and uh, Myra. Well, you know, as it turns out, she did grow and change as a person from the result of her first love. And it was positive. It's a happy ending in the end. Little chibis. And this is like. Okay, this is the reference. Okay, the what she's wearing, she's wearing the Rin's cos or well, it's a, well, it's a costume, I guess. Rin cosplay from uh, Fate Stay Night. Well, not Fate Stay Night, but like the Fate series in general. I think the chalkboard is uh, I'm thinking Lucky Star, Konada, oh, either Konada or um, Shaku from Shaku no Shana. I'm not sure. They look kind of similar because there's no colors. So I can't tell. And here's the little amulet from Rin. I think. Here's Madoka, I assume. So Lance. No, and ah, uh, actually, I don't know. Hmm, actually, I, I, this is probably another reference to someone or some other anime series. I'm not sure what this is. Looks like just an idol of some sort. I don't know who that is. All right, I don't get all the references, but I get some of it. Little little pictures, kind of blurry, so I can't really tell what their covers are. I assume they're like visual novels. There's the classic, you know bend over and be the press pose and here's uh, Rika and Beatrice from the Higurashi series well Beatrice is from the other series what's it called something well it's seagulls right I forgot the Japanese name for that mm, trying to remember uh, can't remember oh well uh, well it's it's the it's just, it's related the Higurashi series I don't know whatever uh, it's probably a reference to something. I don't know what that is. And the plane of the plushie, snowman, here at the window. Is there like a cliche where, like a heroine climbs through the window? I don't know. I feel like that's like a trope or something, but maybe not. And here's her activating her gears. Is it gears or gia gears? Right, gears. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, oh, wait. Looks like I'm missing something. Oh, I can't click on this. Looks like I'm missing a CG. Interesting. Mm, I don't know if I'll ever get it, though. Incess is Wincess! Oh, not really. Not in this story, anyway. 
And here's the maids. I don't recognize the left maid, but I think the right maid is from, uh, what was it? Maria Holic, I think? It looks like her, anyway. Hmm. Here's Karaoke. Sister and Myra, and there's, uh, Lucas, and Lillian. I assume, I assume Lillian is, yeah, the bookmark, right? I assume Lucas and Lillian end up together. I wonder, well, I wonder what, uh, what was her name? Rena, was it? I can't, actually, I forgot her name, because we usually don't call her by her name. But, uh, our sister, right? What about her, uh, our sister's little romantic relationship? You know, I wonder, you know, what happened there? We don't really know the classmate she fell in love with, or, well, I don't know. I don't know if it, she's, like, uh, in a romantic relationship. Anyway, here's some extra stuff, actually. I, I assume, like, concept art? Interesting. Little drawings by the developer, or the, oh, well, I assume, well, the artist, anyway. I assume the developer and artist is the same, but sometimes it's different. I'm not sure exactly, though. But either way, here's some concept art. Hooray! Hmm, some stuff we don't really see, actually. I guess they didn't really uh, get turned into CGs. Full fleshed out CGs, anyway. <laughs> there's like comic. Yum, 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 yum. And more comics. Or a four, com a four comma, I think. Anyway. So I guess that's it. There's nothing else to do. So... And there's little, like, songs you can play. <laughs> I like I like, I like chiptunes, or I guess... Not, is it called chiptunes? Like anything, like, uh, made in the style of old video games, you know? Th that sort of music I really like. Anyway. I guess... This is it for, uh... No, well, your Tears. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See you then.